Here's the three color design that we will print on t-shirts. After separating the colors, the dark blue positive is on page 1, the positive for the pink color is on page 2. And the positive for the light blue color is on page 3, then we will print the positives. Click printer icon on the toolbar. Then click settings on pop-up. Click the size of the paper. Click high quality. Click grayscale. Click OK and print. The printer I'm using is Epson L120. The paper is a short size, ordinary copier paper and the ink of the printer is ordinary dye ink. The positive or the design should be black in color so that the light will not penetrate the design during exposure. After printing the positives we will prepare the photo emulsion that we will use. This is the photo emulsion. And this is the sensitizer. This photo emulsion mixture is a leftover from my previous project. I will add photo emulsion to the mixture and add sensitizer. Ten part photo emulsion and one part sensitizer or ten is to one. You don't have to use a measuring cup, you can just estimate. Or if you do this often you can just rely on the color of the mixture. I already prepared two screens for this project. We will use the scoop coater. Pour photo emulsion mix on scoop coater and apply it on the screens. By the way I'm using 100 mesh screens. Ideal for water based textile paints. After applying photo emulsion on screens, return the excess photo emulsion in the container, use cut cardboard to scrape the photo emulsions. Turn off the light and wait for the photo emulsion to dry. Then we will apply second coating of photo emulsion. Pour photo emulsion on scoop coater and apply it on the screens. This second coating will ensure that the screens are properly coated. After applying photo emulsion on screens, return the excess photo emulsion in the container, use cut cardboard to scrape the photo emulsion. Turn off the light and wait for the screens to dry, then we will set up the positives on screens. Center the positive on the shirt pad. Mark the location of the positive on the screen using a ball pen. We will use this cooking oil in adhering the positives on screens. Spread the oil on screen using the forefinger. The cooking oil will make the unprinted part of paper transparent. So instead of using clear acetate for positives, we use paper which is cheaper and always available. Always remember that the screen is facing the table the positive should be facing the table too to prevent reverse screen stencil. Sometimes edges of positive is wavy, you can put a cut on this part and platen the wavy part, you can also use flat glass to platen wavy parts if you have one. Then we will set up the other positives on the second screen. Trim the positive. Pour cooking oil on screen. Spread the cooking oil using the forefinger. Adhere the positive. Add oil if necessary. Remove trapped bubbles between the positive and the screen. Pour cooking oil on the bottom part of the screen. Spread the oil using the forefinger. Trim the third positive and adhere it on this area. Use forefinger to remove trapped bubbles. Add cooking oil if necessary. After setting up the positives we will expose the screens to sunlight for 10 seconds. Let's expose the first screen to sunlight. 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 1006 1007 1008 1009 and 1010. Then the second screen. 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 1006 1007 1008 1009 and 1010.
then we will wash the screens. This part of the video is running at normal speed. I did not remove the sound of the video so that you will have an idea on what's happening during the washing of the screen stencil. Before I remove the positive I usually spray the insides of the screens first. Then I will remove the positive while I'm continue spraying the screens. You will notice that the design is lighter in color compared to the background. It's because the design is covered during the sun exposure. And the background is the part which is not covered. Because the unprinted part of paper becomes transparent because of the cooking oil. Because of the sensitizer we mixed earlier to the photo emulsion the photo emulsion reacted to sunlight and hardened. The water will soften the unexposed part photo emulsion which is also the design and will fall off. After less than 2 minutes of spraying the photo emulsion starts to fall off. Creating an opening that the paint will pass through during printing. Target the design with water. Control the blow of water using the finger. The photo emulsion on the design will continue to soften and will become easier to remove after a while. You will see here that the design is really clear now. Spray the other screen. Target the design with water. Control the blow of water using the finger and continue spraying. After less than 3 minutes of spraying the unexposed photo emulsion is so soft, and fall off the screen easily. This time look closely to the design. The opening should be clear from stumps. Target those unwanted photo emulsions. Double check the design, check the details. Then we will remove the water trapped on the openings of our screen stencils using a cotton rug. Tap the cotton rug on our screen stencils to absorb the trapped water. Sometimes this trapped water is sticky and can still block the openings of the screen stencils if not removed properly. Then wait for the screen stencils to dry and we will apply photo hardener to make our screen stencils tough and durable. This is the photo hardener. Wet cotton with photo hardener and rub it on our screen stencils. This is a different chemical from the sensitizer although they have the same color. Then we will wait for the photo hardener to dry then we will tape the edges of our screen stencils to prevent paint leaks during printing. I will use this packing tape. Tape the edges of the screen stencils.
Then we will put the t-shirts on shirt pads before we start the printing. The shirt pad had table adhesive on its surface, so that the t-shirt will stick to it. Making the t-shirt stable, ideal when printing two or more colors. I have a video on making this kind of shirt pads. If you are interested just click the suggested video on the top right corner of this video. I have 50 shirt pads, so if I have to print 100 pieces of t-shirts I will print it in two sessions. By the way I have a video on applying table adhesives on shirt pads, if you're interested just click the suggested video on the top right corner of this video. Continue putting all the t-shirts on shirt pads then we will start the printing. In printing the t-shirts I will use this plastic squeegee. Put dark blue paint on the screen stencil and let's begin. I will put this finished t-shirts around me or close to me so that I can easily go back and forth to do the printing. The paint I'm using is a water-based rubberized paint, it dries naturally, if you want the paint to dry quickly you can use electric fans or blowers. Or you can put the finished t-shirts under the heat of the sun. This is the fourth t-shirt. Continue printing until the sixth t-shirt. Then on this seventh t-shirt I will put substantial amount of paint on top of the design so that the paint will not dry while I'm away transferring the first six t-shirts to another area to dry. Then resume the printing following the same printing pattern we did earlier until all the t-shirts are finished. Then we will wait for the blue paint to dry then we will print second color pink. In printing the pink I will use this smaller squeegee. Put pink water based rubberized paint on screen stencil and let's begin the printing. Just like what I did in printing the dark blue color. We will follow the same printing pattern. I will put the first six finished t-shirts around me or close to me so that I can easily go back and forth to do the printing and we will stop at the seventh t-shirt to transfer the first six finished t-shirts to another area to dry. I have a video on making this kind of plastic squeegee that I am using. If you're interested just click the suggested video on the top right corner of this video. This is the seventh t-shirt, put substantial amount of pink paint on top of the design so that the paint will not dry. Then transfer the first sixth t-shirts to another area to dry. Add pink paint if necessary. Then resume the printing following the same printing pattern we did earlier until all the t-shirts are finished. Wait for the pink to dry then we will print the third color light blue. Let's begin printing the third color light blue. Again. I will be using this plastic squeegee in printing the light blue. Put light blue water based rubberized paint on screen. And let's begin. By the way, I have a video on mixing this kind of paint that I'm using. If you are interested you can click the suggested video on the top right corner of this video. In printing the light blue, we will follow the same printing pattern we did earlier printing the dark blue and pink. Silk screen printing is all about repetition. Do the same thing over and over. And the more you do it the better you become. 
I hope you learned something from my videos. Think of my video as a guide, you may or may not follow it. If you think you have much better ideas from what I have been doing then follow your heart. I made my videos as simple as possible so that anyone can start and learn screen printing. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for more videos.